Welcome to Meathead Test Kitchen, where food and fitness come to hang out. Nutrition, training, and life. It's all fair game on Meathead Test Kitchen. Welcome to Meathead Test Kitchen. I'm Sasha. I'm Sadie. We are a podcast where food and fitness come to hang out. And today, we're going to get geeked out on a on a subject that I love to talk about and think about protein (laughs) the god of gains yes for an introductory class on protein please go back to episode four which is WTF is a macro Um, we cover a everything carbs fat protein in that one just the basics but today we're going to cover why you should eat more protein how protein is your best friend forever when it comes to muscle growth and how much protein you should be eating each day that one is a big one, and uh, I saved the best for last on that. Sorry, yeah. you're going to have to wait for that one. Um, but protein is good for you. There's a lot of studies out there. Like, I mean, you know how many studies I read that were like, protein promotes muscle growth. And it's like, yeah. okay, that's a well-established fact right. at this point. Like, we know this. Um, other reasons you should eat more protein, like it's good for your bones. Contrary to the myth, Animal protein isn't bad for your bones. Now, there is a lot of discussion between vegans and omnivores and scientists and whatever about whether or not red meat causes cancer and all these things. Just eat it in moderation. Like anything else, you'll be fine. Right. Exactly. You you run no higher risk of having a well-balanced diet with animal protein in it than you would with a well-balanced diet with plant protein. It's really up to what your body likes and what your ethics say. Right. Like that's, that's really the, the only thing that dictates it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So people who eat more protein, they tend to keep more bone mass as they age and they have a lower risk of osteoporosis and bone breaks. So this is super important for us, especially ladies, because we are more likely to encounter osteoporosis after menopause, which I am very impatiently waiting for. I'm hoping for early menopause (laughs) at this point in my life. Just get it over with. (laughs) Eating enough protein and lifting weights are a good way to keep menopause, post-menopause osteoporosis osteoporosis from happening. So if you start that habit now, it will be well established 10, 20, 30 years down the line when you actually encounter menopause and you'll be Gucci. Right. It won't suck as bad. I mean, probably still suck, but it won't suck (laughs) as bad. (laughs) Have you ever had a hot flash? Um, yeah. Yo, not fun. Like that part of it probably still going to happen, but (laughs) the the other things that come along with menopause may not be as shitty. (laughs) I just don't want my ovaries to work anymore. (laughs) Shut down my baby factory. It's done. Oh man. Dietary protein also (laughs) boosts your metabolism, which is pretty tight. Yes. Your body uses calories to digest and uses the nutrients in our food. This is called the therm the thermic effect of food. Now it's about to get real nerdy, just FYI. Yes. (laughs) Protein has a higher thermic effect than fat or carbs. So this can help you boost your metabolism and make your body burn more calories. So on average, that number could increase by 80 to 100 calories per day. And that's on the, that's being conservative. I read other articles and other studies that said that it could be anywhere from 100 to 150 or 150 to 200 calories per day. But either Mm -hmm. way, you want to burn more calories because the more calories your body burns, the more food you get to eat. And who doesn't want to eat more food? Honestly. Uh, Everyone. Every, all the time. Yeah. Dependent on the day. Especially right now. Jesus. (laughs) Uh, Talking about wanting to eat food all the time. Yeah, no shit. I, uh, anyway, (laughs) eating protein will help you decrease cravings, which Mm. is also helpful when you want to boost your metabolism because cravings suck. The best way to deal with them is just by keeping them from happening in the first place. We've talked about this before. The easiest way to avoid a slip up is to not even a slip up because it's not a slip up. You're not fucking up. Nobody's going to punish you. Uh, Cravings happen. Yeah. The easiest way to crush them rather, let's put it that way, is to just make sure that they don't happen in the first place. Yeah. I mean, they'll still happen from time to time, but Mm -hmm. definitely won't be as frequent by eating more protein yes, in a balanced diet. And also setting yourself up for success by not keeping that thing that you're craving in your house. All yes. The time. Yeah. Looking at myself was so right. good. <laughs> One study in men showed that uh, increasing protein to 25% of their daily intake reduced their cravings for late night snacks by 60%. Uh, and yeah, right? Yeah. That's crazy. I, I honestly, like truth be told, it's true. <laughs> it is. It is because you're less hu- you're less likely to crash at yeah. the end of the day because you fueled your body properly and it had everything it needed. Exactly. Like I used to frequently late night snack, and it wasn't even just like snacking; it was like full on binging mm-hmm. because I wasn't 
getting what my body actually needed. It was craving something when it actually needed more protein. Yep. Yeah. That's how that works. Debugging your body signals are Mm. fun. Things Mm -hmm. you learn about yourself. Uh, (laughs) Having a high protein breakfast has the same effect as eating your protein throughout the day. It will keep you full longer. Mm -hmm. So that you're not hitting that, like, I usually call it like the 10, 15 effect where you get a couple hours into your day and you're just like ready to cut somebody's head off because you're starving. Yes. (laughs) Well, and I found too that starting my day off with a higher protein meal, Mm -hmm. like the rest of the day, I make better decisions when it comes to food. Like I'm not just going to grab that, like some random ass thing, like uh, the packet of Oreos we always talk about, talk about. I'm probably going to grab for an apple or yeah, something instead. Because you, you set that high note already at the beginning of your day. You've already started on a good note. Why why derail it now? Yeah, that's that's a good habit to get into, especially, again, weight loss isn't always the goal. Sometimes you just want to feel better, and this mm. is part of it too. Making sure that you're feeding yourself will make you feel better. Exactly. But it's also going to help power your metabolism in the event that you are looking to lose weight. Exactly. So it doesn't matter what front you're on. Either way, you probably need more protein. It's beneficial is what we're trying to say. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because your body also repairs more efficiently when you feed it enough protein. Did you notice that about yourself when you started feeding yourself better? Your body heals faster? Yes. I heal tattoos in like six days. Yeah. Well, anything. Yeah. A a little paper cut. Sliced my finger open with my Swiss Army knife last week. It's already Those movies where it automatically heals itself. Like not quite that fast, but yeah. it's pretty damn fast. It's it's insane how fast it is sometimes. Yeah. Protein, be, the reason for this is because protein is the main building block of our tissues and organs. Numerous studies have said that eating more protein after an injury can help speed up your recovery process. And it's also good for your hair, for your mm-hmm. nails, for your mm-hmm. skin. I think we talk about that in a little bit. But either yes. way, you want to eat more protein. For real, dude, I sliced my finger open with my fucking Swiss Army knife the other day and it's already healed shut. Yeah. And that was like a week ago. Protein. Protein's great. Like for real. I love it's, it. I never have a problem getting. I know in the beginning, like when you start tracking stuff, you're probably, most people typically aren't as used to eating as much protein as a person needs yeah. in a day. But now I'm like, Our I'm almost is all always about over dishes. on protein. Yes, me too. Almost always. Me too. Because I love protein. <laughs> Cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, beef jerky. Yeah. Chicken breast. Steak. (laughs) Yeah. I'd say bacon, but bacon isn't more, bacon's more dietary fat than a dietary protein, depending (laughs) on what you get. But yeah, protein, protein's going to help a lot of things in your body. Um, Your body needs it. It's, it's like fat. It's like carbs. Your body needs it. Mm -hmm. It's why it's a nutrient. It's why it's one of the building block nutrients. Um, Another thing it can help you with is it helps lower your blood pressure. High blood pressure causes heart attacks. It causes strokes. Mm -hmm. It causes kidney diseases or kidney disease, and a host of other problems. Yep. It's been shown that higher protein intake has been linked to lower blood pressure. Mm-hmm. By the way, the sources for all of this, if you're wondering, will be linked at the bottom of the show notes on meatheadtestkitchen.com. Yes. Uh, increased protein lowered systolic and dist- diet dystolic? Systole and dystole, I think is how, what it is, yes. if I remember correctly. Systolic and dystolic blood pressure, according to one study. It also lowered LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, mm-hmm. and triglycerides, according to another study. Yeah. So protein. Protein. Na, 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 na. Also, contrary to popular belief, won't hurt your kidneys. Yes, yes, yes. For a really long time, you know, it's, it goes back to the don't eat too many eggs, you'll get cancer mm-hmm. stuff. Stuff like along the same vein. The rumor that high protein intake hurts your kidneys isn't true. It's pretty well documented that as long as you don't have kidney disease, a high protein diet won't harm you. If you eat too much, it will just exit your body via urine. And it's just going to stink. Yeah. That's it. This is why we say, please go talk to a doctor before you Mm -hmm. start any fitness or nutrition regimen so that you know what you're starting with. Because if you do have a kidney problem or if you only have one kidney or, you know, whatever, if your liver doesn't have something right, that can, that can have something to do with it too. You need to make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself. So always, 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 I don't think we can stress it enough. Yeah. If you're, if you're just listening for the first time, if this is the first episode of MTK you're hearing, please s- go talk to your doctor before you start any fitness or nutrition regimen. Yes, absolutely. Okay. 
did that. <laughs> I always We've feel covered like it. I, I always feel like I have to episode. do that. Yeah, I always feel like I have to do that. It's like I don't want to. I want to make sure nobody gets hurt because that's the anti of what we're trying to do here. Protein will promote muscle growth. It has been well documented, like I said, a million different places that protein helps you gain muscle. We could quote you a thousand, hundred, bazillion, gajillion, infinity, thousand different studies mm -hmm. from. 1975 to 1980 till now, like it's, it's been known for quite a while. Protein repairs muscle tissue. So when, when you are working out, your muscle tissue gets torn and then your body starts to repair it. And when your body repairs it, your muscle tissue comes back even stronger. This is mm -hmm. how, this is how your muscles grow. This is how you, you chase the gains. This is where you get your aesthetics, all that jazz. Yes. Thank you, protein. So when your muscles are exercised to the point of momentary fatigue, which means that you can't do another rep immediately. Mm-hmm. That is when protein comes in to save the day. It transports cells. It serves as enzymes to perform various physiological processes. It acts as hormones to make sure that these body processes happen. Yeah. Protein does all of these things for you and, and then some. Yeah. Honestly. Protein's badass. <laughs> Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and they do a lot of that heavy lifting when it comes to your body chemistry. Mm -hmm. We covered again in what the fuck is a macro, but there are 20 amino acids. Four are non-essential, nine are essential, and eight are conditional. Taking amino acids with training and eating enough protein can increase muscle protein synthesis, which is a great thing. Yes. You need, synth I think a SpongeBob, photosynthesis. <laughs> Not even the same thing, but that's every time I hear synthesis, because I'm a 90s kid and cartoons ruined my brain. <laughs> Uh, muscle synthesis is your friend because that's what makes strong. So mm -hmm. while protein's main role is to repair tissue, it can also be used to produce energy for your muscles when other sources of ATP, like fats and carbs, aren't available. That's yeah. a big word. I'm probably going to fuck it up. I spelled it phonetically because it's like 20 letters long. Gluconeogenesis is a term that's used when protein is converted to glycogen for ATP, which is the cell burning process. Mm -hmm. That's what fuels your body. This only happens when you have moderate to high intensity activity for a long period of time. So say that I didn't eat very much and I went and did functional fitness for two hours mm -hmm. or, you know, didn't do any Olympic lifting. It was a lot of cardio. It was a lot of cardio lifting. It was whatever. Mm -hmm. Your body will start to burn that protein because it doesn't have any other fuel sources. This right. is why we, I would say we preach it because we do talk about it a lot. And I do think that it is very non-negotiable when it comes to working out why you need fat and carbs before you work out. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, your body's going to burn protein, and that's going to eat your muscles. And that is the opposite of what you're trying to do. Exactly. So this is why sports drinks like Gatorade, Powerade, they have sugar in them. They have sodium to help keep gluconeogenesis from happening because you'd rather have that protein be used to build your muscles, not to feel your body. Exactly. Like, And the it's a very different feeling when you're working out from if you have fat and carbs first. Mm-hmm. Between if you have protein first, like save your protein bar or your protein shake for after because yes. it's not doing the amount of good you want it to before a workout. Yes. When people drink a protein shake during a workout, they're more doing it for the carbs and fat than they are for mm -hmm. the protein. Exactly. Um, so what I mean, honestly, what I do for an intra workout, if you need to have something that you sip on besides water, BCAAs with branch chain amino acids, which we just talked about, that's a great choice. Um, a lot of those don't have sugar added. They're very low calorie. They actually taste really good. Mm -hmm. Um, we can put some recommendations for up or for those up on our page. Um, I just like to do like country time lemonade. I water yeah. it down a little bit and then just throw some ice and I throw my creatine in it. And that's what mm -hmm. I drink when I work out. That's just, you know, it's nice and sweet. It keeps me from crashing. You'll yeah. feel your, all, every muscle in your body will feel burny. Yeah. When you don't eat enough carbs and fat before you work out. Yeah. And, and Bernie, like, like I'm not talking like acid Bernie, like yeah. sore, like yeah. you've already hit your lactic acid threshold and you just started your workout. Bernie. Yeah. I know. I'm not talking like pre-workout tingly Bernie, yeah. not that Bernie. I'm Under talking the skin, like, Bernie. yeah, like you don't feel uh, personally and in this, it varies person to person, but commonalities. Yes. Personally for me, I can, I fatigue faster Maybe I can do 15 reps if I ate carbs or fat before a workout, but if I have protein before a workout as my primary source of fuel, I can maybe do like 10 to 12. Yep. 
Yeah, if I if I have a heavy like com if I have complexes, all I eat before I work out, I'll eat carbs right before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Then I'll wake up, eat some carbs, drink some water, probably have some coffee, maybe a soda. Sometimes I drink soda as like a pre workout just to get extra sugar in me because I don't always eat enough before I go work out, which I know isn't the best thing. Full yeah. disclosure, fully aware that this isn't the best thing for you sometimes. <laughs> so what I've been doing lately, not a good idea. Feed yourself actual food. Don't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, I will. It depends on the time of day. Yeah. If I work out later, I usually won't do that because I'll have enough food in me. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I really just need that sugar to make sure I'm not going to die. Yeah. I'll, I'll grab like... If it's later in the day, maybe some like, I like those cheddar rice cake things. Oh, yes. They're really good. Um, Otherwise, I'll just grab an apple or a banana quick, really any time of day. And that's enough. Except yesterday. I was freaking starving. (laughs) I was like, I'm going to eat this and I'm also going to eat this and I'm going to eat after immediately. (laughs) I've had days where we've been driving to the gym when we lived in PR. The drive from our house to the gym was like 10 minutes, I think. So we would get out of the neighborhood and then it's five minutes to the gym. It's literally right down the street. So we would like, I would grab like three slices of bread and a banana and I would Mm -hmm. just fucking house. I love toast. (laughs) Toast is great. Toast is like my favorite food group. (laughs) We were talking about what bread makes the best toast the other day and we Mm -hmm. couldn't decide. It was a toss up between Pepperidge Farms, like farmhouse white bread, Dave's Killer Bread mm. or Wonder Bread because I feel like Wonder Bread is like the staple of it's food service toast. It's got that sugar toast. in there too. Yeah. yeah. Now I yeah. want toast. <laughs> Damn it. Not to totally sidetrack us on toast, but we <sighs> should talk about how much protein a yes. person needs to eat yes. in a day because that's also important. 15 to 30% of your daily intake should be protein. Depending on your activity level, you'll fall somewhere in that range. Mine's a little higher. I go the one gram per one pound of weight Mm -hmm. um, equivalent just because I want to, I'm still trying to build. Yes. And so if you're trying to build, eating a little bit more protein is a good thing. I do. I, mine's pretty balanced. I would say mine's like 35, 35, 30. Mm -hmm. Um, Carbs and protein are both really like all three of them are super important for what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm trying to still add mass, but I'm also still trying to stay, I, I'm doing that thing where it's really difficult, where you stay lean, but you're also adding mass at the same time. It can be done, Hard. but it takes a long fucking yeah. time, and it takes a lot of food, yeah. and you have to eat very balanced. Like, yeah. I've for myself, I have learned that I have to eat a pretty, pretty much a third, third, and a third for that to yeah. happen, but it can, um, and it's working, which is awesome. Uh, part of my problem is sometimes I don't eat my protein in small enough portions, yeah. So it's not so evenly I to, distributed. Yeah, I get to meal time and I'm like, that's too much protein. So yeah. a good idea is to eat your protein in smaller portions throughout the day because it'll keep you feeling full. So if you have three meals and two snacks, each with an appropriate serving of protein, um, just take that, you know, your daily number and divide it by five. That's all you have to do. Right. That's yeah. it. That's all the math. It's it's that really easy. not scary. Yeah. I well, and I it de- like you said, it depends on how many meals you're eating a day. Mm-hmm. I like to aim for about because of where I'm at, about 30 to 35 grams per meal. Um, and then I've got my snacks in there, which accounts for the rest of it. I'd say I usually eat between 8 to 10 ounces of protein a meal. Yeah. I was just looking up my percentages. I'm 32, 43, 25. So my fat's a little lower, but yeah, whatever. It's good. It's working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fat and carbs, they kind of do the same thing sometimes, as long as you're getting enough fat to make sure that your hormones and yeah. your joints are happy and your brain is good. For sure. Um, almost half of your protein in your body is mus- is in muscle tissue, yes. by the way. Yes. The rest of it is skin, bone, and organs, including your kidneys and liver. By the way, yeah. you know how awesome your liver is? You can literally cut chunks out of it. And yeah. And it will re- Plenish itself, dude. That is, I, I pretty badass. So this is a rabbit hole about livers. Um, I looked at actually donating part of my liver to my brother when he was sick before we realized that like nothing was gonna work. Mm-hmm. Um, and your liver is really fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you've never actually looked at what your liver does, yes, it filters the booze out of your blood and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, but 
like go look at what your liver does for you. If you have five minutes to go nerd out about a thing today yeah. on your phone while you're on the toilet taking a dump, like <laughs> read what your liver does. One for of you. one of your uh, couple dumps in a day because yes. you're eating enough fiber. You're, you're eating a well-rounded diet, so you're pooping two to four times a day, <laughs> or you just don't want to work, so you're taking a ten minute break by hiding in the bathroom <laughs> listening to this podcast sitting hey, on the toilet. I'm t- not guilty of doing you. that at all ever, <laughs> dude. One of my old jobs, we had a basement in the bathroom, and I would just dip down there and hide. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to deal with you. I'm going to go downstairs and act like I'm taking a shit. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so learn about your liver. Make sure you're eating your fibers so you are pooping three times a day mm. so that you have an opportunity to learn about your liver. And uh, if you're chasing the gains, lean meat, eggs, chicken, fish, and cheese are going mm. to be your friends. But don't worry, vegetarian and vegan friendos. Soy will help you as well. So unless you are allergic to soy, then it's going to be a little more difficult. Right. Soy is the only plant-based protein that has all eight essential amino acids. Uh, if you eat too much soy, there can be things with hormonal issues, Mm -hmm. like soy makes faux estrogen and it can fuck up your body. Um, so again, make sure that you know what you're starting with in your baseline in your body, what is good for your body, what isn't good for your body, because that set of rules is different for every single individual walking this planet. Exactly. Absolutely. Like again, one size doesn't fit all. Establish your baseline. (laughs) Yes. Establish your baseline. Like we, first of all, like very differently, build you and I very differently build muscle. Our diets are a little different. Yeah. They're pretty essentially the same, but a little different. We work out the same, but we look very different. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by saying one size doesn't fit all. Like things work for you that may not necessarily work for me. It's really just playing around with things until you get to what you're comfortable with and what gets you to where you want to go. Yeah. Like the macro recommendation from your macro calculator, if you're just now, cause macros are just now taking yeah. off. For, uh, they're mainstream now, apparently. So we've been the cool kids. We've <laughs> been knowing about macros for a while. Um, if you do have any questions about macros, hit us up in an email. Hello at meatheadtestkitchen.com. Um, you can, you can kind of fudge those numbers after you've tried them yeah. for a little while. If you're not, if you feel that you're still hungry or that you are run down, maybe you do need to bump that protein a little bit, or yeah. maybe you do need some more carbs and a little bit less fat. Yep. It's really like, and we can, if you want a refresher, go back to episode four. I know yeah. we keep referencing that through these last three episodes, but that is the baseline is that episode. Yeah. Um, when you first get your, if you've never calculated them before, you're going to be like, what WTF? Yeah, I mean, really, you're just going to be like, I don't because know what the not, hell any of this means. It's not what you're used to, and it's a different way of tracking things, but those numbers are a general idea to go off of to establish your baseline. And you can only establish your baseline if you stick to those yes. consistently, bingo, um, for at least six to eight weeks. You will, You may spike a little bit because your diet is changing, and you're eating more whole foods, mm-hmm. it, you may drop a little bit of weight, but then you will taper off. Yes. If you continue to go down and that is not your goal, then you adjust after six to eight weeks. Yeah, that's when you would add more carbs to your diet right. or whatever. Um, if you've leveled off, that's when, and you want to continue to lose weight after six to eight weeks, that's when you bring them down just a little bit. Yep. Take and out like only, 500 calories. Yeah. it's It ends up being like, I don't know, it's like, 25 grams here and there. Yeah. It's, it's nothing huge. Um, I did read an article somebody posted on Twitter the other day because all I do lately is sit on my couch and read social media because I don't leave my house. But um, somebody was like, so it's just a fancy way of counting calories. And it's like, yes, it is a fancy way of counting calories. However, when you count calories, all you're focusing on is the, the calories. Number. You're not focusing on what you're eating in yep. the calories. This is why macros are different. And this is why macros are I think are the most successful way of tracking your food intake Mm -hmm. because you actually learn, you You know, learn what what your body likes. Yes. And you know what you're putting in your body and what amounts. And you're teaching yourself portion sizes. Yes, absolutely. You don't have to count macros forever. I don't fucking count macros that often anymore. I still play the, I know about how much this is game with myself. And then I get super excited when I'm dead on. Yeah. You get to know. You know, like after you do it long enough, you'll have a feel for it. It's like anything that you do, that muscle memory will be there. And you'll just be like, oh, this is, that looks about seven ounces of chicken. Yeah. You know, like. You don't have to count macros forever. I don't think you should count macros forever. Macros are always going to be there. Like for me, if I, if 
if I go on a bender for a couple of weeks and I don't train and I eat like an asshole or whatever, cause mm-hmm. life is awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when I start paying attention to macros again. It's like, yeah. oh, my eating is out of order. And once you know to how just, to do it, it's yeah. so easy to hop back on. Yeah, it's always there. And like, it's, you don't it's have like to like riding a bike. It. No. Yeah. Once you learn it and you got it down, like it's, you just go back to it if and you it, feel like you need to. Yeah, it's one of those things where you are going to get so incredibly frustrated and it's not going to make any fucking sense <laughs> for like two weeks. And, and then, then you'll finally be like, you'll be like, oh, oh. yeah, That'll you'll have your epiphany and you'll be like, oh. This makes complete sense now. Exactly. Just like to reestablish something that we bring up a lot on this podcast, trying to get your protein or your carbs or your fat Mm -hmm. from whole foods when it's possible. Oh, yes. Like do not rely on shakes as your main source of protein. Okay. Like shakes are good and they have a benefit if you don't think in your day you're going to be able to meet your protein. Maybe you're fucking busy. Yeah. Totally fine, but don't rely on that to get you to your allotment of protein for the day. They are a supplement. Yes. A supplement is not a substitute for a meal. I don't give a fuck how many companies tell you that a shake is a substitute for a meal. A shake is not a substitute for whole foods. No, it's not. Looking at you, Huel, or whatever the fuck you are. (laughs) That's what I think. It it looks like puke. Like it's like the word looks like how puke sounds. (laughs) (laughs) I guess we won't be hearing from them. (laughs) That's okay. I don't want to hear from them anyway. But they're part of the problem. (laughs) But seriously, like Sadie said, like protein shakes, supplements, a protein bar is not a substitute for For a whole food. Yeah. It can get you from point A to point B if you are busy and in a pinch and you may not, maybe you work overnight shifts. So one day when you're working your overnight shifts, you don't eat as much in those days. Okay. But then on the days that you are off, make sure that you're getting those whole foods in. I get their purpose and they do have a purpose and they do, they're pretty tasty, but relying on them ends up biting you in the ass a little bit. It does. Because then you don't know, I feel like from personal experience, I kind of relied on them for a little bit because I didn't realize I was already eating a lot of protein, but I didn't realize how much protein I needed to be eating to mm-hmm. get to where I wanted to go. So I was relying on them for a little bit because it was, it's kind of hard sometimes. But then once I was trying not wean myself off because they're not addictive, but trying to, to ins- consume less. Yes. Yeah. Um, and have more whole foods. I found it difficult, even harder almost to meet my protein for the day because they are so high in protein. So then I'm like sometimes scrambling at the end of the day Mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, 20 short because normally I'd be having a protein shake. Like we don't want you to get, want you to get to that point. If you are going to habitually take protein shakes or, or, uh, what's the other protein? Casein, I think is the other one that you take at night. Um, so you can do like a, if you want to shake in the morning as you're driving to work because you don't have time to eat an actual food, Mm -hmm. cool. Drink your shake in the car and then eat when you get to work and you have a chance. That could be your 10, 15 or whatever, you know? Right. Um, you can make protein pudding. You can make protein ice cream with that. Protein pudding was legit. That slow burn, (laughs) that slow burn. I think it's casein. 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm learning. I'm still learning these things. (laughs) My books came in the mail today. Um, But either way, regardless of how it's pronounced, whether or not I butchered it, um, that is best consumed the night before because your body will burn it and have it available in the morning, which Mm -hmm. will also make you less hungry in the morning, which is a bonus. Um, So, And maybe you're not a breakfast eater, but you want to get your, you know, your protein in. The point we're trying to make is like, Everything but, serves a purpose. Exactly. There's room It's just for not things. a replacement wholly for actual whole yes. foods. Yes. That's the only point we're trying to make. If it comes to having a shake or eating a meal, please eat the meal. Yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED Talk about protein. We're proud to be a Herd at Media podcast. Please subscribe and rate us anywhere you stream your podcasts. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, iHeartRadio, iTunes, basically anywhere. Fuck, we might even have a SoundCloud. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have 
we have all over the place. So when you're not keeping up with us, uh, we've got you covered. We have an unbeatable deal for you if you're a Husker fan. You can get three months of Hale Varsity for the price Ooh. of a month. That's only two ninety nine. That's a sweet deal. All you have to do is use our code Meathead M E A T H E A D. A Hale Varsity subscription includes both the magazine and their all premium digital content. That is a Just deal tight. that you don't want to miss. The magazine, like if you if you go to the grocery store, you'll see Hale Varsity on the end cap at, at your newsstand in the yeah. grocery store. It is. Is, it's legit. Like one of my favorite things about this company that we work for is that they don't half-ass anything. Yeah. And if you if you pick up an issue of Hail Varsity, it is top notch. Like the writing is great, the photography is great, mm-hmm. the layouts are great. Everything about it is just fantastic. So. And it's content that you're not gonna find anywhere else, right? Like legitimately, yeah. Unless sure. you follow us on Twitter or whatever, right? Right? Exactly. So make sure that make sure that you're in on that. Hail Varsity is a great, great, great resource if you are a Husker fan. Three months will cost you two ninety nine. You can subscribe now at hailvarsity.com slash subscribe. Use our code Meathead. And I mean we are biased. Our friends work there, but <laughs> they do a really good job. So they hit do. up Hail Varsity, see what they're all about, and uh, use our code Meathead at checkout to save some chingling. Mm-hmm. Again, to recap today's episode, protein is filling. It's useful. It is delicious, and it will not wreck your kidneys. Kidneys. Um, if you've got any questions about protein, carbs, fat, macros, just want to scream into the void, please hit us up, hello at meatheadtestkitchen.com. You can find us everywhere on social media, um, at Meathead Sadie and at Meathead Sasha on Instagram, and find the show on Instagram and Facebook at Meathead Test Kitchen, and on Twitter at MTK Staff. Again, thank you guys so much for listening every week. We love it. We love getting your questions. We love it when you send us DMs and just want to high five, or you've got concerns, and we can help you out. We yeah, appreciate what, it. Whatever you're up to. We appreciate knowing. Like, yeah. I've been talking to people with all this stuff that's happened with the ice storm in Austin this week, and it's mm-hmm. like, hey, yo, what you need? Yeah. Bless social sure. media for that. Yeah, absolutely. It's like one of the great things <laughs> about social media. It does media. serve for purpose. It's, it's not bad. Being nice to one another. It's not bad. Hopefully, all the time. we get there all the time. <laughs> yeah, right? Cool. Eat your protein, wash your hands, wear your mask, be nice to people. Meet Head Test Kitchen. Out. Join Sadie and Sasha. Every Monday, helping to make your fitness and nutrition journey suck less. MTK. A Huda Media Production.